If you are an absolute beginner to video editing and you just bought yourself Corel Video Studio 2022 and you want to do something as create your very first video. Even simple things like moving a clip to your timeline can be daunting, but stay tuned. In this tutorial, I will take you from start to finish on your very first video. When you first launch Video Studio 2022, you will be greeted with this window. What I want you to do is go up here into the Edit tab, click it once, and this will bring you into the software itself. The very first thing I want you to do is go into your Settings, Preferences, go into your Performance tab, and make sure Enable Smart Proxy is enabled. You'll see this little ratio. This represents the video size. Now, any time your video is greater than this video size, it will make a rough copy, a draft version. And this just makes it easier for you to work inside the video studio much easier. However, when you save it, it will use the original video. So fear not, you will never, you never ever lose the quality. So let's uh, press OK and let's get moving. The first thing you can do is you can add a new folder like I have. So you can press the word add here and then you can call it whatever you want. Now I'm going to use the folder called grips and then what we want to do is import all the video and audio whatever you have onto your project. To do this go up to this folder import media files click it once it opens up a, uh, a window and all you need to do is look for where your videos are stored. So I created the folder on my desktop called begin to get all these video files into the program. I just click or anywhere in the folder, Control A, which highlights all the footage in there. And I'm just going to use the word open to import the entire project. All right, so now we have everything here that we need. We click anywhere on the software to unhighlight it. Otherwise, if you drag it, everything comes at once. I won't go into great detail because you are beginning and you just want to start. This is your main track. So you start using this track first, the top line. So what we can do is we can preview everything within this window. This is your preview window. You want to look for the video that you want to start telling your story with. Simply just click on it once and you'll see it pop up in the preview. You can use the play button here to preview it. Once you are happy with the video that you want to start with, you can then click and drag this video onto that first line called your timeline. Just click and release and voila. Now if you, you see that this is highlighted with an orange box around it, and if you play it, it will now play this video rather than the clip from here. Okay, you can use your space bar to stop and start the video as well. You'll see a green check mark in the corner that indicates that this video is on this timeline. Very simple. Let's say, for instance, you don't want to use all this video. You just want to use sections of it. We can actually edit the video before we bring it in. It is called trimming. So I'm just going to remove this clip again by highlighting it and pressing delete. And I'm going to now double click on this. And what it will do, it will pop up a window called the clip trim. In other words, it is just a way that I can look for parts in the video that I want to show. We can do it two ways. We can press the word or just use the play button here. We can look through the video. We can use this little orange thing called the CTI, the current time indicator. Click and drag it to the point where we want to start and finish the video. And we can also use this little wheel here. We go left, it goes backwards. We go right, it goes forwards. Let's keep this simple. Let's say I want to start with the video here. I use this little marker here called the set point in. In other words, this is where the video will start. I will drag this or play it or however you want to do it to the point where I think this is all I want to look at in my video. And I'm going to use the end point, set it out. Once I have this video, I'm going to press OK. Now when I drag this clip into the timeline, you will get a very short version of it or just the section that you wish to see. The purpose of creating a video is to tell a visual story. All visual stories has a beginning. So let's start there. 
the first thing we want to do is create some type of intro something very simple to let the audience know what this video is about I'm at the beach so this video is about a day at the beach there's two ways I can do this number one is I'm gonna leave the footage onto the timeline I'm gonna go here where it says title one I'm gonna double click on this track itself and on the preview window you will now see double click here to add title so double click now you can just start start typing your text so we're gonna write in the the beach or the day at the beach whatever it is that you wish click anywhere in the preview window and it highlights the text you can change the text or the font by using these options here let's keep it simple let's stay with the the default which is the aerial black I'm going to move my cursor and it turns into a pointer and then I can click and drag that to reposition my text and then once I like it I just release I want to unhighlight this again I can just check or press anywhere in the software and it will unhighlight it this thing here which is called the current time indicator we can click and drag it or we can use this little marker here that just brings it to the beginning of the project you will notice that the video clip and the text track is longer and sitting slightly off when you see no orange lines around any of these nothing is highlighted to highlight it just click it once now we can click and drag this to the beginning like so we obviously want the text to be the same length as the video clip or shorter to do this move your cursor to the end it turns into a black arrow left click and hold and then you can slide it to the left and you can either match the clip above you or go shorter again here's a pro tip for you generally we try to keep an intro under three seconds this way you don't lose the attention of the viewer okay so now that we have this have a quick view of this so the beach and the video is playing in the background so now I'm also going to show you a second option another method is just to have the plain text before the video start so we already know how to create the title so let's do that and the issue here is if I was to drag a video file onto the main track we are right back to the beginning which is not what we want because we already know how to do this I need to create a black background and then have the video play so let's remove that by just pressing the word delete on your keyboard we can go up into this thing called black backgrounds or backgrounds and then choose black or whatever color you want we click it once and then we can click and drag it onto the timeline we can then adjust this the same way we did with the text track it's highlighted in yellow click and drag it to meet the same length as the text if we want to see everything together and right now it is just on the clip and we want to see the project which means both clips at the same time click on the project and again we can use this to go right back to the beginning and now we can use the word or press play good now once we're happy with that we can then again bring that footage onto the timeline and it will then continue onwards after the text has finished like so so let's do that nice video very easy the next step is now create your story to do that we just start adding more and more clips to the timeline so let's say I have more video footage of me on the beach with my family all I need to do is if I'm happy with it again we can double click it go into the trim option if we've done everything like I showed you we can then just start click and dragging it to the timeline now you're going to notice that as you added the screen or your footage starts to disappear it just keeps moving and moving if you wish to continue seeing the entire project you can scale it down by zooming out or in so we can zoom out and then this way you can preview the entire project you can also use the zoom in if you want to go something very specific you want to look at or you can use this little thing and that's basically it fits everything to the timeline like so so all the video footage you've put on will then fit it onto the timeline in one go you can also now use transitions so if you want to go from one clip to another like let's go here it's an aerial view and then walking on the beach so let's have a look at that like so we're looking at the aerial view and then we want to make it go into a new look which is somebody walking on the beach 
we have the option called a direct cut which is basically going from one clip to the next nothing fancy in between or if you want to make it more fun you can add and transition so let's do that you go here in what we call the a b transitions and you're going to get a plethora of options so whatever one that you want to use use that you can preview it and it gives you a slight demo of how the transition works if you're happy with that look click and drag it between the two clips like so and then release again you can highlight or view this by dragging the current time indicator press play and that brings you into the next clip my professional opinion is try not to use too many transitions because it comes across looking cheap if you wish to add text as the video plays, let's say just after the transition, you want to add in the word fun. With the video file up here, if you add anything, it automatically takes it to the left. But when you use any of the other ones down here, like the overlay or the title tracks, wherever you click it is where it stays. So if I want to add the word fun here, I go back into the title track, double click, it comes up on the preview window as before double click and then you can type in your text and i'm going to use the word fun if i click anywhere in the preview window you'll see yellow boxes go around the outline i can hold and click and drag it wherever i want and what these yellow boxes do if i move that cursor onto one of the yellow boxes i can then resize this so i want to make it slightly bigger while I have it highlighted, if you want to do something like add a little bit of fun to it, keep it highlighted, go into the fonts here, and then you can move it anywhere you want, like so. So let's just keep it up here, but now I want to add some form of motion to it. So I'm going to use the word motion here, and I'm going to apply it. So I'm going to check the word apply and you'll see a, light, a slight preview of what the font is going to do. I can actually view it by pressing the space bar and I can see what it does. There you go, fun. So you'll also observe that this did not snap to the left, it stayed exactly where I want it. So you can then click and drag this anywhere you want, then release and it will stay permanently there. And that my friend is how you can add a little bit of animation to the text. Next is bringing audio to your project. You've got two options, Music 1 and Music 2. Very simple, look for your audio file and then click and drag that into either one of them, one or two. Click and release like so. While it's highlighted, you can also then click and drag it to anywhere you want. So let's just push it right to the beginning in line with our video clip. Now you'll notice that the video clip is quite short and the audio track is quite long. There's two ways we can do it. You can hold your cursor right down here, click and drag it and just move it right in line like so. Or if I control Z this, if I highlight the last clip and then just move this little indicator here, click it once, it lines it up perfectly. I highlight the audio track. I press the letter S on my keyboard and then delete on my keyboard. Voila. Most of the times you want the audio to fade in and then fade back out. It's very easy listening. The way we can do that is we can double click and another window will pop up and you'll see here fade in and fade out. Let's highlight both of them. Anything that's on Corel that's blue, that means it's been highlighted. And here we can adjust the length. We can take up to 10 seconds for the video to, or the audio to come in at 100% or whatever time you want. And fade out is the same way. We can adjust the length of time, how quickly or how long it takes. We have a section, second option as well. If I use the sound mixer, you'll see this popping up. You'll see these little green or yellow squares. And these are what we call keyframes. So this will tell me that from this keyframe to this keyframe here, the video will go, the audio, I should say, will then slowly fade away. If you do not want that keyframe here, you just hold click and move it up and it disappears. So this is how we can do it as well. Now, as a beginner, you may come across that you've also got some speech and you've also got background. You don't want the two to cancel each other out. Here is a very simple way. Right click, a new window will pop up or a new panel will pop up and you have something called audio ducking and this is brilliant. 
the background music will play at 100%, but the minute it detects speech, it re dramatically reduces the audio on the background music only and not on the speech. As a beginner, I recommend using this. The last step is where we go over everything to make sure everything is according to the way we want it, and then we're going to save the video. So here's something that I think is worth doing. As the video or the audio fades out, you also want the video to fade out. The two together works really, really well. If you want to do something like that, use a transition. Let's go into A, B. What we want to do is fade it to black. There's a lot here to go through. The easiest way to do it is just surge fade. You'll see, oh, what am I doing? Surge fade. Now you'll see fade to black. Click and drag it to the end of the video clip. What this will do, it'll fade the audio and the video at the same time. And let's just do that first. There you go. Oh, so there's a little bit of a kick noise at the back. If you do want to see anything that's unusual, this is why I always suggest previewing the video before you save it. We can zoom it out as much as you want. And that way you can really see, okay. So here I have a remnants of a clip that's left over. I can just click on that and then press delete. Little things like that can make a huge impact on the final result. Once you have everything to your desire, go to the share tab up here. Okay, we're in the last interface. There's two ways we can do it. We can use the word MPEG. If you're just rendering it out or saving it for YouTube, I suggest just staying on this one. You also have an option here that it automatically goes to YouTube. Let's stay with the basics. Let's go back up here. For you, you could do something as simple as the same as the project. In other words, whatever you recorded it in, use that. It is probably the best way to do it as a beginner. Also, if you decided that you don't want to do that, always choose MPEG-4, and that'll bring out as an MP4 file. It's a very good file, and the, the amount of megabytes is very, very low. You can also check here the estimated output, just how big your file is going to be. Once you are happy with everything, all you need to do is name it and then place it in the location on your computer. Once you've done that, just press start and it will then render out or save the video. And then you can use this video to upload it to YouTube or whatever it is that you want to do with it. So there you go, my friends. This is the absolute beginners how to use Video Studio 2022. And as always, thanks for watching.